We visited with John Bergstrom, owner of Energy Plus in Hermantown, Minnesota, to talk about the rain garden and pervious concrete they installed in 2009. We asked John about cost and maintenance issues, what he learned from doing this project, and whether he's satisfied and would recommend these practices to others. Well, what we did was we needed to renovate our parking lot a little bit here, and so as part of that, you know, just aware of more uh, non-pervious surface, we wanted to uh, uh, try and slow that runoff down as much as possible, and so uh, as part of that process of dealing with the surface water and then uh, um, uh, affecting drainage, you know, we did basically uh, designed a rain garden to, uh, and it was, so it was part of our kind of parking lot project. The swale was here, uh, but because of the slope of everything, we had a lot of problems with uh, just water and puddles and all kinds of things in the uh, in the frozen season, and so we wanted to get rid of all that water was the primary thing, and so we used pervious pavement, which really worked wonderfully for uh, getting rid of the water. Uh, 12 months a year. Oh, well, it was a factor, but you know we knew we were doing something for the for the long term. So uh, we definitely had our eyes on what the total cost of the project. We didn't want it to run much more. Uh, we didn't want it to add. You know, we didn't want it to double the price of our parking lot project. And just the way we went after that and kind of managed the project ourselves, we kept those costs under. And then just having the uh, being as part of the planning process, you know, we were able to. Uh, look at the costs early in the game and go, well, gee, that's just going to be too expensive, so what if we do this or that or the other thing? And uh, we ended up with a plan that was you know, way inside of our budget. I thought we might have uh, uh, vacuuming maintenance of every third or fourth year, and uh, the way our runoff has run, it's probably more an annual sort of thing. Uh, we could probably get by with doing it less often, but it's turned into an annual thing, but that's uh, no hardship at all. Um, it has had some a little bit more maintenance issues than we anticipated, but that you know it, it just has worked beautifully. And the way we used it, the costs were really kept down because previous can be really expensive. And the way we did it, we ended up with a very low initial cost, uh, and then just a little bit more uh, maintenance than we had initially thought we might have. And as time goes on, we'll probably have a little bit less maintenance, but uh, but that's kind of where we are now. It's neat in the sense that we planted it in probably October, November, and basically we just forgot about it, and we haven't done any maintenance to it at all. I guess uh, there might have been one crew that came up uh, that was part of the program that may have done some interim maintenance that first spring, but uh, no, it's held up beautifully. There's a few uh, species in there that are non-native, but it works like a dream and looks just fine, and so in that sense, uh, we should do more maintenance. I guess that's the neat thing. Is in doing nothing, it worked great. I'm very satisfied. I mean, the, the issue that we were trying to deal with was our parking lot. You know, when you get a big rainfall, the rain garden's full of water, you know, and uh, six hours later, it's not full of water. So uh, it uh, seems to be working as it was designed, and so no way to quantify that, but the the way the pervious has worked and the way the parking lots worked and uh, you know that's all worked like a dream. It's taken care of all these seasonal problems we had and we think uh, we've uh, gotten close to kind of a best practice in terms of uh, the runoff. Do the research and get, in, get involved as much as, as you feel like you can or you're willing to get involved. Uh, uh, you know, the, the tradespeople and finding those right tradespeople was really important. Going slow, taking your time, and when the engineer brings something up, you know, even though the excavator dismisses it, look at it, you know, and so just taking all these bits of information and trying to find the right path. You know, I think so. I think using this is really a great idea, you know. You know we think our observations that it's performing really well in the sense that it's slowing that runoff down from a great big black parking lot. Uh, and so, yeah, just for water quality, I think it's a great thing to do. It didn't end up being very much more expensive uh, and it didn't take any more uh, usable land, usable parking lot. Uh, you know, basically took up a ditch area and an area underneath a sign and so we basically made no, uh, there was no sacrifice or, you know, no hardship in laying it out, uh, just a lot more design and a little bit higher cost and uh, I think we have a system that works better as a parking lot but then also uh, I think is uh, near, a, near a best practice for, uh, for just dealing with runoff water. 
For more information about storm water, water quality, and the practices described in this video, visit lakesuperiorstreams.org. We thank Minnesota's Lake Superior Coastal Program and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration for supporting this project.